Receiving a 50K scholarship is not a dream if you watch this video till the end. Welcome to the world of college applications, specifically focusing on the CSS profile. I'm here to guide you, whether you're a student or a parent, through the essential steps of filling out this crucial form that can open doors to financial aid. The CSS profile, a service of the College Board, is used by many colleges and scholarship programs to award non-federal aid. It might seem daunting at first, but worry not. This walkthrough will empower you to tackle the CSS profile with confidence. Let's get started. Let's talk about CSS profile a bit deeper. Each year, CSS profile unlocks access to millions of institutional financial aid dollars. So let's learn more about it. What is CSS profile? The CSS profile is an online application used by colleges and scholarship programs to award non-federal institutional aids. When do I complete the application? Most students complete the application in their senior year of high school starting on October 1st. Schools may have different deadlines. You should be sure to check with each school you are applying to. Who must complete the application? Check your college's information to determine whether they require the CSS profile first. A list of participating schools is available online. Some schools may also require separated parents to complete separate applications. How do I complete the application? The CSS profile may only be submitted through the sign-on link available at cssprofile.org. I'm going to take you over the website and I will answer all your questions over there. Ready? Are you ready to start your CSS profile application? Now, I'm going to share some helpful tips and resources before you start your application. First, documents on hand. You will need your most recently completed tax returns, some forms, W-2 forms, and other records of current year income, records of untaxed income and benefits, assets, and bank statements. So about user account, if you have a College Board account, sign in using the same credentials. This will save you time and help the College Board apply fee waivers you receive to your CSS profile application. Save and return. Remember, you do not need to complete the entire application at one time. You may save and return to complete the application and deadlines. To make sure your application will be considered on time, submit your CSS profile by midnight Eastern time of your earliest priority filling date. And also we have a profile for parents. Review the information for parents page to find out more about completing the CSS profile as a custodial or non-custodial parent. It is available on College Board's website. And are you ready to get started? What do I need to complete the CSS profile? I'm going to go over a few common questions that you may have about CSS profile. CSS profile allows families to provide a more complete picture of their financial circumstances than the free application for federal student aid or FAFSA may provide alone. Hundreds of institutions use CSS Profile as a common application for non-custodial financial aid, reducing the number of times a student may need to fill out institution financial aid applications at multiple institutions. So it helps you a lot. How do I know if my school requires the CSS Profile? Review the list of participating colleges and check your college's financial aid website to see if the CSS Profile is required. I'm going to show you also on the website. Review any institution-specific deadlines to ensure your, you submit your application on time. How do I add additional schools to the CSS profile? You can add additional schools at any time by clicking on Add a College or Program within the application. Note that if you add a college or program, you need to navigate to the end of the application to ensure you submit the form to the new institutions you have added. What documents do I need to complete the CSS profile? You will need your, and if applicable, your parents most recently completed federal task tax returns and all schedules. 
W-2 forms and other records of current year income, records of untaxed income and benefits, assets, and bank statements. Is my data secure? How is data transmitted? It's a very good question. The CSS profile is shared only with the institutions you select in the application process. The students may identify additional institutions after completing the application. Some institutions may require non-custodial parents to complete a CSS profile. Non-custodial parents complete the information separately and data is transmitted confidentially to the selected institutions. About parents. Now there are some questions about parents. Which parents do I include on my CSS profile? All parents, step parents, and parents' domestic pair partners should be included in the parental relationship section of the CSS profile application, at which point you will be able to indicate which parent or parents' financial information will be included. If your parents are divorced or separated, you will be asked on the application who provides the majority of your financial support. For example, uh, what if my parents are divorced? There's a section that you have the question and over there you have to provide the information about the parent who provides the majority of the support. How do I know if CSS profile is required from both of my biological or adoptive parents if they are divorced or separated? Some colleges require both of your biological or adoptive parents, your custodial parent and your non-custodial parent to complete separate separate applications. And there is a section for the parents. I do recommend checking that part about this question. What if my parents are divorced or separated? Which parent provides the majority of my financial support? <clears throat> if your parents are divorced or separated, you will be asked on the application who provides the majority of your financial support. Typically, the parent that selects that they provide more than half of the student's financial support is the primary custodial parent. If support is split evenly between households, select a parent with a higher income and asset. If a student has two parents, households, completing the CSS profile, keep in mind that only one parent or household will select that they provide more than half of the student's financial support. It will delay processing if more than one parent selects that they provide more than half of the student support. For US citizens and permanent residents, the parent who completed or will complete the FAFSA should be the same parent as the one selected on the CSS profile as providing more than half of the student's financial support. It is important to check FAFSA's website for more information about it. Why would a parent need their own account login and how do they create it? It's a very good question. Custodial parents should not create an account. It is important. If your parents are divorced or se separated and at least one of the institutions to which you are applying requires the CSS profile for non-custodial parents, the non-custodial parent, the parent who does not provide the majority of your financial support, will need to create a parent account to complete a second CSS profile. To create an account, non-custodial parents should go to the homepage of the CSS profile and click on click the sign into button and then create an create account under don't have an account. And then the biggest source of confusion for parent account creation is using the student's information. Once the non-custodial parent has created their account and begins to complete the CSS profile, be careful to answer student sections with the student's information and parent sections with the parent's information. It is very important. What if I do not have contact with my non-custodial parents? A non-custodial parent is typically one who didn't provide most of the student's financial support during the past year. A CSS profile waiver request for the non-custodial parent is available to submit to colleges. Please note that some institutions may have their own form or process. Each college will look at your waiver request and determine if they will waiver the requirement of your non-custodial parent to submit a CSS profile application. Are step parents, my parents' partners included? 
Again, another uh, question that uh, you may have. Yes, all parents, including step parents and domestic partners, uh, should be listed in the section when prompted to list your parents. You will then be asked which parents' information will be supplied on the application you are completing. Is parent data secure? How is data transmitted? The CSS profile is shared only with institutions you select in the application process. The students may identify additional institutions after completing the application. Some institutions may require non-custodial parents to complete the CSS profile, as I said, some may not. What is a student's CB FinAid ID? If you received an email notification about completing the CSS profile from the College Board, your student's CB FinAid ID will be in that email. You should enter that here on the Getting Started page on College Board. If you can't locate your CB FinAid ID, you can leave the question blank. How do I set up my College Board account? If you created a College Board account for the SAT, PSAT, or AP, use the same username and password to sign in. If not, create a new account that I will show you, and then your custodial parents will use the same account as their student. Only non-custodial parents will create a separate account. What if I don't remember my account or password? Students will have one College Board account that they may use for multiple services, SAT, AP, CSS profile, etc. If you have forgotten your account or password, help information and support for accounts can be found on the main College Board website. So please go over that. Don't create a second account. Does my parent need an account to complete the CSS profile? The student will use their College Board account to log in and complete the CSS profile application. The student will need to log in first in order for a parent to assist them in completing their application. If the student's parents are divorced or separated, a non-custodial parent will create an account to complete a second CSS profile. How to navigate the dashboard? You may have also this question. After logging into the CSS profile, you will see a link to the dashboard on the upper right of your screen. Navigate to the dashboard to see your application status, the colleges and programs you have added to your application, the dates you submitted the application, deadlines, and more. How can I monitor my progress while completing the CSS profile? While in your CSS profile, you can click the sections link on the top left of the screen and navigate to the sections that have been completed and those that uh, still require information that I will show you shortly. Let's talk about what is the cost of the CSS profile. The CSS profile is $25 for the initial application to one institution and $16 for each additional institution. Some students may qualify for a fee waiver. Who qualifies for a fee waiver? Domestic, domestic undergraduate fee waivers. Family adjusted gross income is under $100,000. The student qualified for an SAT fee waiver. And the student is an orphan or a ward of uh, the court under the age of 24. Now here, I have also some uh, frequently asked questions. Please pause the video, watch, read them, and uh, hopefully they are helpful. What does a CSS profile fee waiver cover? CSS profile fee waivers cover all application and reporting fees. When are students notified that they receive the CSS profile fee waiver? The students find out if they are eligible for CSS profile fee waivers while completing the application. This information will be displayed on the student's dashboard and during the submission process. What if I do not qualify for an automatic fee waiver and I'm unable to pay the fee? College Board does not provide fee waivers outside of the automatic process. However, some institutions may have their own fee waiver program, so students should check institutions' websites for additional information. Are U.S. citizens living abroad eligible for a CSS profile fee waiver? No, a dependent student's custodial parents must live 
in the U.S. or a U.S. territory to be eligible for a CS profile fee waiver. It is important. Do students who qualify for an SAT fee waiver need to enter a code to get a CSS profile fee waiver? No. Students can log in to CSS profile using the same credentials they used when registering for the SAT to be considered for an SAT-based CSS profile fee waiver. Will a student who doesn't qualify for an SAT fee waiver be considered for a CSS profile fee waiver? Yes, all domestic undergraduate students are considered based on the information on their CSS profile application. Can a student who qualifies for an SAT fee waiver also get an SAT-based CSS profile fee waiver automatically for both the custodial and non-custodial parents? The custodial family will receive the SAT-based CSS profile fee waiver. The non-custodial parent will not receive an SAT-based CSS profile fee waiver, but may get a CSS profile fee waiver based on their application. Does an SAT school day or other SAT voucher grant a CSS profile fee waiver automatically? No. Students who get an SAT voucher or who have the SAT paid through their school or district do not qualify for CSS profile fee waivers automatically. However, they may qualify for a CSS profile fee waiver based on their CSS profile application. Now, let's go over uh, international cases. Do I complete the CSS profile in my home country currency? Yes, you will complete your CSS profile in your home country currency, and all of your information will be automatically converted to US dollars after submission for your school or schools. What if my parents' income or assets are in two different currencies? Students must pick one currency in which to complete the application. If your parents earn income or have assets in different currencies, you will need to convert and report in one type of currency. What is my parent tax return status as international student? If your parents file taxes to report their income to your government, then you will select completed for the first question. Then select other non-US tax return for the second question. The expandable help text is also available to guide you in case your tax year differs from the calendar year. If your parents do not file taxes, then you will select not filed and not required to file a tax return. What do I submit to IDOC if my parents do not file U.S. tax returns. The students should submit any government-issued official tax documents they are required to file in their home country. Non-English documents must be translated into English. This can be done directly on the forms before uploading. Failure to translate non-English documents may result in delays in processing your financial aid information. If you or your parents are not required to file tax returns, you should complete a non-tax filer statement and provide documentation of any wages. What is my citizen status? Most international students will select other, which means you are not a U.S. citizen and are not eligible to live permanently in the U.S. You will only select eligible non-citizen if you live in the U.S. permanently and may be on a path to becoming a U.S. citizen. Let's talk about corrections. What if I made a mistake on my CSS profile? If you made a mistake on your application or need to include additional information after you submit, you can update your application by clicking correct your CSS profile. So don't worry about it. How many corrections can I make? Students are only able to submit one correction per academic year. If you have already submitted a correction and find an additional error, you will need to reach out to your institutions directly. How do I add parent data to my application? 
If you did not initially answer questions about your parents and need to make a correction to add parent data, you should contact customer support at the college board. Let's talk about IDOC. How do I know if my institution uses IDOC? Review the list of participating colleges and check your college's financial aid website to see if IDOC is used by your institution. Not all institutions who utilize the CSS profile also use IDOC. You will submit your documents once to IDOC and all IDOC participating institutions can then receive your forms. How do I access IDOC? I just read it IDOC to just make it easier. The students who submit a CSS profile to an institution or program that uses IDOC will receive an email about access to IDOC typically within one to three business days after submitting their CSS profile. The students may also receive an email about receiving IDOC access if they have not previously used IDOC and the school requests documents at a later date. The students will sign in using two of the information that we have here, CB FIN aid ID or social security, security number or date of birth. The students will not be able to access IDOC unless they have received an email notification from College Board. How do I know what documents I need to submit? Required documents will be listed on your dashboard after logging into IDOC. The students can monitor which documents have been processed on their dashboard. What is the process for uploading documents? Click the Upload Documents button on the IDOC dashboard and follow the institutions on the window. You can repeat uh, the file selection process and upload as many files as you like. It may take three to five business days for your documents to be processed and update the status of your required documents. Please note that documents must be no larger than nine megabytes. How is my information protected? The confidentiality of your information is very important to College Board and to the colleges and programs participating in this service. To ensure the highest level of data integrity, privacy, and security, College Board has implemented systems that include multiple firewalls with unique security zones, data encryption, and a lot of uh, security system, data and system backups, data integrity checks, and so on. So you don't need to worry about it. How do I sign electronic forms? You will receive an email from the College Board via DocuSign to electronically sign any required forms. Please wait 24 hours after all signers have completed the electronic signature process for your document to show as received in your portal. Who do I contact with additional questions about the CSS profile? U.S. and Canadian students can contact customer support at College Board. There are different telephone numbers. Please check College Board's website and feel free to contact them. Who do I contact with additional questions about IDOC? Again, you can contact customer support at College Board for different, from different telephone numbers. Please feel free to check them. And who do I contact with additional questions as a financial aid administrator or counselor? Financial aid administrators can contact support, again, which is uh, available on College Board's website, and uh, they can just answer your question. Now, let's check the website together. As I said, the website's address is cssprofile.collegeboard.org. And the way you just enter, you should be able to see this page. And here we have about the CSS profile, application steps, and so on. And please feel free just to watch the short video and, uh, and have to just briefly complete the questions that we have, the resources, CSS profile for students, CSS profile, um, waiver requests for the non-custodial parents, and uh, some information about CSS profile, uh, fee waivers, and different quest different just sections. And uh, over here, I'm gonna go over each section. Over here, um, I answer these questions. So. Uh, application steps that we have, uh, feel free to check them, fee waiver, and we have resources over here, information for parents, as I said, the section for parents, non-custodial parents over here, international applica applicants, and the IDOC, and also in Spanish language, contact details, 
as I said, CSS profiles for students, IDOC for students, feel free to contact these numbers and that they will definitely help you and answer your questions. And that now just to create, you, you have to first create an account or if you, as I said, if you have another College Board account, you can use it. Click on sign in here. And uh, after that, uh, you should uh, just enter your uh, email address and then create uh, if you have an account. If not, create an account. I'm going to just click here. So over here, you're just here, pay attention to the information. Your uh, personal college board account gives you access to various college board programs and services. And then uh, over here, there is also a really good part. You will need a college board account to register for tests directly with them and view and send this course, personalize your web experience or uh, use certain tools on the website of College Board. And that big feature is a very, very good, uh, just part of the College Board's website. I do recommend checking it. And also carrier tools. If you don't know, for example, which carrier you want to just do, which can you, carrier suits you, please check it on College Board's website. And then if you are an AP student, you will use your account's email and password to access AP classrooms. Just tip. If you're using a shared or public computer, disable the autofill setting on your browser. Always double check your information to make sure it's complete and correct before you submit it. Over here, we have just the basic information that you need to fill out and date of birth, email address, and the high school graduation, your zip code, where do you go to school, and if you are US, you, if you are inside the US or outside the US, your address, everything should be accurate here and then um, stay connected uh, by email. They keep you updated and then you will just write your parent information here and the um, parents first name details um, and uh, a parent uh, email service, copy a parent, an important email. You can just click on it and then they would CC your parent or and uh, also college board email. Parents will receive uh, registration reminders, college um, planning resources and other messages. Feel free to click also this part. And then finally, you will click on I agree with the legal terms for students. And then next, I'm going to just fill out uh, this form, but uh, I need to just fill out as a random person. And then I will show you the rest. After completing my basic information, it uh, asked me to just double check my information, my name, email address, and so on. And after that, it, uh, it sends me an email a confirmation email with a code. I have to just enter that code. Now in the in this stage, I have to create a password. I'm going to just create a password and then move on to the next part. After creating my password, now I have to add a mobile phone number here and it will help with the recovery, recovering my information and so on. And after that, just uh, it uh, activated my account. Now I'm a success. I'm really, I'm successful now. Now you've created a College Board account. I will click on uh, Continue. And again, um, another message: Your College Board account has been created. I click on Continue. So over here we have support hours and the different details that I mentioned earlier. Now I'm in my account. So I will go to the main page, CSS profile. Over here, I will see sign into fall 2024 or spring 2025, or sign into fall 2023, spring 2024. Based on your case, you would just uh, apply. I'm gonna go with uh, the first one, sign into fall 2023, spring 2024. I will just click on it. Now over here, College Board Terms of Service for CSS Profile and IDA Consumer, you are permitted to access and use features, functionality of institution documentation and so on. And over here, you need to just read it. Please pause the video to read the information over here. It will definitely help you. And uh, I'm gonna just move a bit slowly. And over here, I'm going to just read it because it's important. You are permitted to access and use the features and functionality of Institutional Documentation Service or IDOC or CSS Profile, CSS Profile, solely to provide financial information or documentation to an institution or scholarship program seeking to 
process your application for financial aid and solely in accordance with the, the user information provided online and by your institution or scholarship programs permitted use. You or you means a student and his her parents or other legal guardians. So just pay attention to that by clicking uh, the agree button on CSS profile or the acceptance box on the uh, iDoc. You agree that you have read and, uh, and understand that these terms or services. So make sure that you have read it. You understand that your application or information provided to an institution or a scholarship program via iDoc or CSS profile does not provide or automatically generate financial determination or actual award of uh, financial assistance. College Board has no responsibility or liability in connection with any financial assistance or award that you may or may not receive. College Board will only share the information you provided in CSS profile with the institutions or scholarship program that you select. More information here. College Board will have uh, no responsibility or liability in connection with any loss or damage, which uh, may, be just, uh, may occur by you or um, as a result of invalid or insufficient data. So make sure that you have provided any course of action taken by you and uh, any deadlines, uh, communications, and so on. Please read it. You agree not to allow any person to use your account. So you should use your account to access the information. When you begin your CSS application, you will be asked to include your preferred first number name. Your preferred first name will then be used throughout the application and uh, anybody who uses the application. And you will access iDoc and CSS profiles through a College Board website. And then over here, we have different information. Please feel free to just read. You can pause the video and read. You understand that uh, title and so on. Just read it. I'm going to just uh, skip it. And general disclaimer we have here, limitation of liability. And uh, just different information, please feel free to pause the video and read them carefully because it will help you throughout the application. And after reading all of them, you will click on I understand and agree to these terms and service which govern my use of um, the iDoc service and CSS profile online forms. Then you will click on uh, continue. And so I have a welcome message, academic year, blah, blah. And this is my uh, uh, CB fin aid ID and... Uh, Application status in progress and the continue application colleges and so on. I'm going to just click on continue application. So over here, application checklist, complete each section below before submitting your application. You will have a chance to review your application as I said, getting it started, start this section. And in each part, we have also some information, complete the sections above to continue. I'm going to click on the start section. So first, we will collect some basic information about you, the student. So I know that this part is for me as the student. I click on continue. And over here, I will just complete the information about the studio, student. And the, just here, the preferred name you enter here will be shared with the colleges and the, so on. If you would like College Board to use your preferred name outside of CSS profile, you will need to update your College Board account. So I'm going to just complete this part. I clicked on next and what is the best way to reach you phone number email address it is important I will just uh, enter here and after that about the student I should provide additional information date of birth my marital status and uh, select the status of uh, permanent residency where I live if you if I live outside of the US or Canada I'm going to click on none of the above and if you live in uh, the US or Canada you will just uh, use that I'm going to just, uh, so I will write 1, 1, 2005, marital and never married, whichever applies to you. And over here, you should select uh, the set of your permanent residency. This question will help you. Now, over here, when you click on these yellow boxes, you will receive more information. So over here, I click on it and uh, I will go to the end, none of the above. Or if you live in any of them, you can choose. None of uh, the above. Save and click. Please confirm that it is a student's date of birth. Just a second. Just I have to change. Just I have to change uh, the birthday to just match it. So 2006, and I clicked on next. So student citizenship, and um, over here, what if I'm not sure? Over here we have the information. U.S. eligible non-citizen. Please read it. It will definitely help you. Pause it. It helps you. And uh, for example, now I'm going to click on others. Imagine that uh, you're none of them. Save and continue. Students country and the country where the student lives. For example, I'm going to write Turkey here. 
I'm going to move to Turkey. So save and continue. Student citizenship, country of citizenship, uh, for example, because the, it differs. I'm going to again go to Turkey. I will choose Turkey. So visa type, for example, different visa types. I'm going to click on other. Student status indicate if any of these are true for the student. Uh, these questions help them. Financial aid offices may require supporting documents. So when you write something here, they may also require supporting documents to make sure that these, these pieces of information are accurate. So always provide accurate information. What is a legal dependent? And the, for example, the student has legal dependents over here. A legal dependent is someone who receives more than 50% of their support from you. So, uh, I mean, from you, the student. This can be a child or another person who lives with you and will continue to receive this level of support for this academic year. So, has legal uh, dependent? I would say yes. Save and continue. Tell us your full address. Student's permanent address. So, it is about this student. I will just uh, go over here. I will go to Turkey and the city Istanbul. And these two were, and also you will just complete your uh, information over the same. And the street address, I'm going to write again Istanbul Street. Save and continue. And your CB Fin Aid ID is used to match your application data. If you have one from last year or received one via email, enter it here. You may leave this blank if you do not have your CB Fin aid id so i don't have it i'm going to just leave it blank save and continue so confirm demographics please confirm this information is correct it is used by your school to connect your application to your school record first name last name date of birth and the, the email telephone country i'm just checking everything and this information is accurate complete i save and continue and now this part is for parents. In this section, we'll ask basic information about the parents. Please include all biological, adoptive, step parents, legal guardians, and parental partners. So it is important. I'm going to just click on continue. This part should be completed by the parent. So the first one, parent one, tell us more. So for example, parent one is, uh, for example, I'm going to write parent one and the uh, parent one. Uh, as the last name, for example, this is the father, which one? So I yeah, save and continue. And for parent two, for example, I'm going to go for mother one, mother two, mother, save and continue. And over here, warning, changing parents may make some information invalid. You may have to answer some questions again. So I will just click on save and uh, Continue household verification. What is the marital status of my parents? Are they married, separate, separated, divorced, unmarried, not living together, unmarried, living together? So based on your case, I'm just writing married over here. What country does uh, my parents, for example, live in? It is important uh, because uh, it will uh, help uh, universities and colleges when uh, they just uh, review your case. Select the parents' permanent address. If the country does not appear in this list, the CSS profile can't be completed online. Contact the schools that require the CSS profile for guidance. So over here, uh, for uh, my parents, I'm going to write, for example, Turkey again. So save and continue. Academic information in this section, they will ask questions about uh, my current school year, the student's current school year. So I click on next, current academic year. What is uh, the student's uh, grade level for... Um, for example, this academic year, if the student is uh, still in high school, even if they are taking college level courses, select the students here in high school. So I just click on over here, 11th grade, 12th grade, which one of them applies? I'm going to write 12th grade, save and continue. Current high school information, use the field to help determine which high school the student attends. For example, over here, if I have the name, name of the state here, I would write otherwise none of the above. And the school's name, I'm going to write, for example, a random school here. So you will write the school's name here. If you have the school's name over, you can choose one of them, and then you will see the school's name. Save and continue. 
if the student attended a private high school in 2022, 2023, provide the following information. If the student did not attend a private high school, click save and continue. And over here, just amount the student received in scholarships and grant and in the currency of the school, enter the gift aid money that doesn't have to be repaid. You receive from the school you are attending or do not include any work, study or loans and the amount that parents paid toward the education. Over here, include educational expenses, tuition, tuition, fees, books, supplies, housing, meals. Do not include loans or fees for extracurricular activities such as sports, band, theater. If your parents are divorced or separated, only enter the amount the parent in the household paid toward these expenses. For example, I'm going to write, for example, 100,000 Turkish liras. Over here, I write just 100,000. And um, over here for the scholarship, I'm going to just write randomly for 20,000. So I save and continue. Now, next part is college program details. The student in this section, they will ask you questions about your plans for the 2023-24 academic year. So I'm going to just click on next. For this part, college and program selection, you can also go over CSS code number, college program name, state, and so on. I'm going to show you how you can just access it, CSS code number. When you go to CSS profile on the main page, you would be able to see check participating schools and scholarships. And when you click on it, it will just take you to this page. Over here, you can see the names, institution name and uh, then their CSS code. So you can write their CSS code. For example, now I'm gonna just write uh, this one over here. For example, when I click on search, domestic undergraduate application does not accept, international undergraduate accept. So over here, uh, Adrian College, and then when you click on it, Adrian College. So here also you can see institution uh, state, and uh, you can see CSS profile domestic students. Do they require or not CSS profile for international students? Do they uh, require or not CSS profile non-custodial parents? Do they require or not? And IDOC, do they require or not? So over here also, you can filter it for yourself. So when you come here, you can just uh, search uh, for the institutions that require CSS profile. And then based on your uh, preference, you can just filter them so you can narrow it down. So just uh, randomly, I've chosen this one. So I'm going to just select it. I've selected because I'm an international student. So I provide the following information for each college or program to which uh, the student is applying. So over here, first year undergraduate never previously attended. So which one of them? I'm going to say first year undergraduate never previously attended. And assigned ID, tell me more over here. If the school or program you are applying to has assigned you an identification number, enter that here. Providing this number will help the school process the case faster. So I don't have it. And uh, what are your housing uh, plans over there? I'm planning to be probably on campus. In other cases, also may work for you. Are you applying to this um, school regular des decision, early action or early decision? So I'm going to just click on uh, regular decision. I'd like to explain this part a bit more because it might be a bit confusing. Over here, we have three different uh, just uh, options, regular decision, early action, and early decision. If you know their def difference, definitely you can make the right decision. First, you have to pay attention to their deadlines. And after that, uh, the notification, commitment that you have, and its impact on financial aid. So it's very, very important. So regular decision, generally, the deadline for submission is around January, January, February, around that time. And acceptance notification are usually sent out by April. And there is no commitment to attend if accepted. And uh, with regular decision, you will have more time to gather financial documents and can also compare aid packages from multiple schools. Now let's talk about early action. Early action, generally the deadline is around uh, November and uh, typically you will hear back by December or January. And that just uh, you should pay attention to the school that you're applying to the college. And there is no again obligation to attend the college if you get accepted. Impact on financial aid, 
since early action is non-binding, you may not get as much leverage in negotiating your financial aid package. And about early decision. Early decision, typically the application deadline is in November, and usually you will know by December, so the notification from the university. This is binding. If you are admitted, you are committed to attend and must withdraw all other college applications. Impact on financial aid. Some argue that applying through early decision may slightly improve your chances of receiving financial aid, but there is a risk that you will be unable to compare aid packages. So be very careful about it. I have also another comparison to make it also easier for you to compare and regular decision, early action and early decision. Generally, the deadline may vary and the admission decision deadline also may vary. Just then you have to pay attention that early decision is binding and uh, may vary by school. As I said, CSS uh, profile deadline may vary. Just you need to check. Last but not least, you need to pay attention to these points. Uh, and the regular decision gives you the most flexible, while early decision is the most uh, restrictive. Admission rate, early decision and early action may have higher acceptance rates, but uh, this is not uh, university, this is not uh, universally true for all the schools. And about financial aid, with regular decision, you can compare financial aid pass, uh, packages, which is not possible with early decision. Just you need to pay attention to these uh, details. Let's get back to our um, application process. So I've clicked on a regular decision, save and continue. College program selection, CSS code number, and um, as I just search, save and continue. This is uh, the one that I've chosen. You can just choose uh, some other uh, colleges as well. I click on save and continue. Now college program details, tell us more. I click on tell us more. First year undergraduate, assign the ID. If the school program you're applying has assigned, I just mentioned everything, save and continue. Save and continue. Okay, now about the currency. It's important to know that currency you'll be using. Complete your application using the currency most or all of your financial documentation is in. Should I convert my account to US dollars? No, enter all financial amounts in the currency you choose here. So over here, what currency will you use to complete this application? I'm gonna just use Turkish Liras here. Let me see. Mm, Turkish Lira, so you can just choose your currency, save and continue. Okay, now about parents' details. It's important this part should be done by students' parents. Next, we'll collect some basic information about the students' parents, and um, they will need to know their date of birth, contact information. So I click on continue. So my parent one, I'm going to just go over uh, 19, let's say 80. How will this be used? Email address and the college board to send information about financial aid process and will be shared only with the colleges and the programs receiving this application. So I'm gonna write parent1 at gmail.com. Highest level of education, you can just choose based on your parents, save and continue. For mother, again, I would go 11, 1980. And uh, over here, parent2 at gmail.com. Highest level of education you will use, save and continue. And the next section, again, parent income, will ask about the student's parent income. You will need their 2021 federal task, tax returns and W-2 form or wage statements from each of their employers. I'd like to explain this part a bit more because it might be a bit confusing. Federal tax returns, that this refers to the official document submitted to the government for taxation purposes. Generally, Turkish parents will need to provide a document that's the equivalent of this tax return in Turkey, known as gelir vergesi beyannamesi. Again, you can just double check with your lawyer to find the accurate document. W-2 forms or wage statements, W-2 forms are US specific tax documents that detail an employee's income and deductions for the year. This equivalent for Turkish parents would be a document from their employer that states their annual earnings. This is often referred 
to as a salary slip or maash bodrose. Information you'll need to provide annual income, including all sources of income, such as salary, interest, and investments, employer details, information about where each parent works, and other financial assets. This might include savings, real estate holdings, etc. Key points for Turkish parents, document translation. All documents may need to be translated into English. Currency conversion, financial figures will likely need to be converted to US dollars. Make sure to note the conversion rate used if you are doing. But based on the, based on the selection that you make in the beginning of uh, the application, you may not need to do it. And the verification. Some schools may ask for these documents to be verified by a third party. So it's a good idea to have them readily available. So you might need to notarize them based on the university or college. Now let's continue. This part should be done by parents. I click on continue. So parent tax return status. Did the parents file a federal tax return for 2021? What if my parents filed a non-US return? If the parents' country, country's tax year does not follow the calendar year, report information from the last tax year that ended before April 1st, 2022. Completed current tax return. I'm going to just click on it. Or estimated current tax return will file. Not filed and not required to file a tax return. So I will just click completed. Save and continue. Parent tax return type. What type of tax return did parents file or will file? And then other non-US tax return if you're out of, outside of the US or Canada. And then other options also may apply. Save and continue. To set up the rest of your application, parents will need the following documents. 2021 tax, tax return if applicable. 2021 wage statement from each employer. Hint, include wage, wages, salaries, commissions, and tips, self-employed business income, and bonuses. And um, do not include uh, compensations for in-kind benefits, for them housing and food. Include all tax um, and tax exempt income, whether reported on earnings statements or not. So how much did the parent father earn from work? I'm going to write, for example, 100,000 Turkish euros. How much did mother earn? For example, 100,000 euros, for example. And parent non-US tax written for or non-taxed filer. Enter the following amount. I'm going to just click on continue. Parent non-US tax return or non-tax filer total compensation from employers. For example, total compensation from employer include wages, bonuses, benefits in kind, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to write, uh, for example, 200,000 liras. Interest income, dividend income. So interest is money earned by your deposited funds, such as say a savings account or a certificate of deposit, include both tax. For example, I'm going to write, for example, 20,000 liras dividend income. Dividends are payments made by a corporation to shareholders from its profit, include both taxed and tax exempt amounts. So for this one, I'm going to write 15,000. Save and continue. Parent non-US tax return and uh, net income from businesses or partnership. Net income is uh, reven revenue minus all applicable expenses. Reported, I'm going to write, for example, 10,000. Net income from a rental estate, if I have, if not zero. Net income from farm, zero. No income from them. And the parent non-US uh, other taxable income. But you are include all sources um, such as capital gains, pensions, and so on. I don't have any, for example, as a parent, I write zero. And also I write zero if I don't have any. Save and continue. All taxes, mandatory. And um, so on over uh, here, mandatory retirement. I'm going to write, for example, um, all taxes. I'm going to read it again. All taxes, mandatory withholdings and set asides paid. Withdrawal include income taxes, state taxes, local taxes, and so on. Over here, you need to write the details. I'm going to write, for example, and um, let me write zero. Over here, just to move to the next part. For the next few sections, enter the total amounts. Total amounts of parents received in 2025. So it's going to be the total amount. 
and um, income included, but not limited to amount reported in that. So total amount I would write for them 200,000 liras. Parent income and benefits, income from other members of their household, um, include money given to the parents or paid on their behalf. And uh, over here, read the information. I'm going to write just uh, 10 for them. But again, you can read them, housing, food, and the other living allowances received as member of the military, clerg clergy, or other profession for each of them. I'm going to write just 10 money given to them, paid on their behalf, and include bills. The information is uh, over there, so I will just uh, add uh, 10 over there, other untaxed income, and the worker's pension. I'm going to write again 10. I'm going to write zero without explanation. Income and benefit, parent one income from work. For example, I'm gonna write 100. Again, mother's income, that was father, mother's income again, 100,000. Other taxable income, for example, if I have, I'm gonna write 50,000. And the untax again, just read it. And if it applies to you, you can just write, I'm gonna write zero. Save and continue. Was parents 2022 income significantly impacted? Due to the COVID pandemic, if yes, please provide details in the specific special circumstances section. So if you have yes, and by the end of the application, you will provide. I'm going to write, let me write yes. So we can see that one. But for no, you won't see any other requirements. And the do students' parents expect a significant income change in 2023 due to a new job, a job loss, retirement, benefit change, etc.? If you provide yes, again, you will... Uh, give the re reasons. I'm going to just write yes. And the, the amount of parents received or expect to receive in 2023, my income, for example, let's say parents' income would increase 20%, mother's income would increase 20%, and other things would uh, make five, 50,000. And again, the details, I'm going to write zero here. Next, uh, they will ask about parents' employment and a retirement plan. So, what is the, my father employment is not employed by others, self-employed, unemployed, and so on. And the parents uh, one occupation. I'm going to write, for example, teacher. Where does uh, my parent work? For example, in Istanbul, blah, 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 school. And how many years? Uh, for example, three years. And the parent one, which retirement plan does my father participate in? If you have any of them or other type of plan in Turkey, for example, employer-sponsored plan and so on. I clicked on other type of plan, parent one retirement, <clears throat> and the current value of parent one tax uh, deferred and the after tax, tax retirement pension annually um, reported total amount in the parent's tax uh, deferred retirement accounts, uh, regardless of whether the contribution were from the parents. I'm going to just write 10 here, but again, based on your case, you will just... Uh, Include so for the mother again. I'm gonna write self-employed just to add the variety over here. So occupation again, teacher. I just clicked on next there for this one again. Other type of plan. So I'm gonna write for example ten. And about housing information next, you will we will provide some details on where the family live. And if the family owns the home, need um, we will need to need the mortgage information to complete this section. I'm going to just click on continue. And parents' permanent address are the same. Yes, if not, you could just click on no, save and continue. So street and the, the same address. And uh, we own the house, rent the house, live with others, housing. Based on your case, I click on own home. and. Uh, Home purchase here, <laughs> I didn't purchase my home. For example, parents, you can just write uh, the year, the details that they ask you, for example, 2020. And uh, the price, so I'm gonna write uh, 1 million uh, liras. Current market value, for example, 150, one and a half million. Did I, yes, one and a half. Total amount owned on the house, uh, for example, over here. You can just read the information you can write uh, because I'm going to write uh, half a million. So parent housing details, what is the amount of own mortgage? I'm going to just write randomly 10 
So for each one, should be completed based on your case. So I click on next. And the student housing, which best describe my housing situation, live with others. Live with others if the student's family lives um, with family or friends and others. So over here, own home. Next, save and continue. And uh, tell us about uh, my home. Again, the same. I didn't purchase my home. Yeah, that's right. I didn't purchase my home. So I would just leave them blank. Mm, let me, I didn't, if the student owns a home but uh, didn't purchase, enter the year the student took the position of the home. I'm going to write 20, 22, 20. And then continue. And the uh, home, yeah, the same price. I'm going to just write 100. Just as I said, you need to provide the details of uh, your home and uh, what is uh, your monthly housing payment. I'm going to write again. 10 liras, just a random one. An important part of the financial aid is understanding who is in your household. On the next page, we will ask about the people in your household, such as a spouse or and children. So I click on it. And um, if you are married, add a dependent. So for example, if the student, if you are married, enter the information of your spouse. Additionally, enter everyone other than you who lives in your household and receives more than half of their support from you. I'm going to just remove it and save and continue. Child support. Uh, did Scott's parents, uh, did the student's parents receive child support? No, yes. And pay the child support. I click on no to give more of a picture of financial abundance, so parents' expenses. So parents have medical or dental expenses, not covered insurance. You can write yes. <clears throat> and the parents have the following expenses. For example, repayment of any college loan, payment of any college debt, and so on. So parents leave expenses. So over here, again, some details about utility bills and the food, clothing, and the household necessaries, and so on. For each of them, you can just click. And you can see even simple things uh, just matter here. And the transportation and the other expenses. And if you have, you can you should also explain it. I will write zero. And uh, in this section, they will ask uh, some question about assets belonging to students' parents. To begin, they will ask questions to different types of assets. Let me just click on next. Current amount in cash savings. So I'm going to write 10. But again, you should provide accurate information. Parents have the following assets. About investment, just click on it to see what, uh, yeah, I'm going to just click on no. Own real estate and own a farm. You should just provide accurate information. And um, again, over here, own, but are held in the names of their children. The assets, if they're, they have, I click on next. Number of businesses owned, I'm going to write zero here. You can just write the parents. And then they will also talk about um, income and the student's income here. Students' income, if a student is married and uh, they need to provide the student's spouse's uh, tax information and um, have a tax return. So, no, not filed and not required to file a tax return. Uh, the student doesn't work, for example. Following documents um, and over here from each employer, how much did, it, Scott, er, did the student earn? I'm going to write, for example, 10. But again, you should provide uh, Tell us more about the income. Interest mm, about the income receipt. I'm going to write 10 again. Questions about uh, additional income. How much, uh, you know, what should I include? Earning from work study program and so on. I'm going to write just 10. How much uh, child support uh, I received, for example, 10 liras. Untaxed income. Again, I'm going to write just 10 for them. I'm going to just write zero here. And um, expected earning, for example, I'm going to expect 100. Expected earning in next year, 100. And the tax income in the summer, 10. Expected other tax, 10. Expected total on tax, 10. And expected total on tax income and benefit, again, 10. Just for each of them, just click on them. You will see the details that you need to complete. So I click on it. And um, 
how much does students uh, the student expect to receive from the following sources to pay for educational expenses this part is important from their parents for the how much do not include amounts that they plan to borrow so i'm going to write for example 100,000 scholarship grant from sources other than the college and university to which they are applying what should i include again over here with the information is written i'm going to write 100,000 and uh, i'm just clicking on them so you would be able to just pause the video and uh, read them carefully i'm going to go write zero and uh, will the student receive funds from uh, the government uh, for college expenses if yes you can write over there and they uh, will uh, receive will the student receive funds from any agencies you can write yes if you have them and uh, will the student receive tuition benefits if yes you can just include i'm going to click on no and will the student how will the student um, uh, for transportation um, yeah how will the student uh, Uh, probably the transfer international student transportation i was just checking the question how will the uh, student for transportation okay how, the transportation to the u.s students income how uh, it will be just uh, given i'm gonna just write let me write uh, um students income and the more complete picture of your final they need also some of uh, the expenses of the students again child support i'm gonna write zero and how much medical dental expenses? I'm going to write uh, probably 10,000 euros. Um, <clears throat> and uh, now this student asset, tell us uh, about the type of asset you own if this student owns them. So for example, if you have any, I'm not going to choose any of them. And how much does the currency have in cash? For example, 10 liras. Um, any retirement asset if this student has all of these, but just so you should pay attention to the parts about student and parents special circumstances for example i will not click on any of them click on next oh, at least one of the special circumstances so i'm going to write to other <clears throat> so okay special thing explain the additional circumstance you okay let me just go over the previous one so i'm going to just uh, choose uh, the one that doesn't ask for clarification. Okay, you need to also clarify. Explain the additional circumstances you selected, including annual amount uh, paid for uh, or additional costs. You can just explain. Hopefully, this is a test for my YouTube followers. So I click on next. So, okay, ready to submit your application. Before submitting your application, Please review your answers and confirm that the information is accurate. I'm going to just click on review my application. You click on it, and then the following information provided in the application has been identified as possibly incorrect. And um, if the information provided should be checked, click the link. You will just click on them. You reported that parent has divided income but did not provide an investment value. So over here, just say you will see the information that might be wrong because I randomly just try to show you different uh, aspects of it that's why i just um, receive these warnings so if you receive any warnings you can just correct them now over here next you will have the opportunity to review all the information you provided fix any mistakes and begin review and if you have already reviewed your answers and are ready to submit your sys, click on skip review i click on skip review and over here all the information is true you click on i have read and continue save and continue i'm going to just wait and uh, over here now we have application fee and the college program selected for example we have this selection total amount the first one would be 25 dollars <clears throat> and then you will click on pay by credit card or debit card pay by get fee payment code so you will click on pay by credit card then it will take you to uh, to this page and then you will just uh, complete the form you will make the payment and after that and your application will be just done 